This is Hunt Nebraska, the official podcast for insight into Nebraska's hunting and shooting sports community. Be sure to give us a follow on Facebook, our space for sharing stories, information, tips, and techniques. Now, Hunt Nebraska. All right, welcome everybody to our first podcast. Now, to me, guys, it seems like we've been doing this for for a little while. That's because but... we, this is our second podcast. We screwed up the first one. We're redoing it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but uh, welcome to Hunt Nebraska's How to Deer podcast and and we're trying something brand spanking new something we've talked about for some time uh and we hope to make this a series to help get you from zero to venison uh in an efficient manner yet this uh hunting season as we start the official kickoff to fall and all that stuff introductions though we've got to get this started then we'll talk a little bit about what to expect on this podcast so let's go with age before uh before beauty and we'll just kind of work it on uh, up yeah. on that scale so I, 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 right I, over I can here go with that. Right i can understand here. that i'm jeff rollinson assistant administrator for communications division with the nebraska game and parks commission and uh like i said we've been doing a lot of this stuff radio some tv this kind of thing and uh, anything we can do to get the message out, we're, we're having fun doing it. And I'm really excited about this new podcast. All right. Uh, I'm Jackson Ellis. I am the Hunter Education Coordinator for the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Uh, longtime deer hunter. And hopefully we can spread the word and get more people successful and out there in the field enjoying, enjoying deer hunting. There you go. And I'm Hershey. I'm just here to squeeze as much deer hunting expertise, tips and tactics out of these two uh, as we possibly can. Uh, And one thing we're going to want to make sure everyone that's listening to this or watching this online, go ahead, give us a a like, subscribe to this. So, you know, when the next episode pops out Uh, and we're kind of kind of live on a couple of different arenas out there, but uh, the best portal to get to all of them is the hunt Nebraska Facebook page, which is something new we've kicked off. And Jackson, you're kind of been leading the charge on that. Tell folks, what they can kind of expect on the hunt nebraska page yeah so hunt nebraska is kind of our specific um, hunting facebook page for the nebraska game and parks so it's going to have you know all your seasons and stuff like that and we're going to give updates throughout the season i'm going to post on there some kind of um, organic stuff just what i'm doing throughout the year you know um, hanging tree stands in the summer and then hunting in the fall and what we're doing out there and um, what people should kind of expect to see when they get out there in the field And I I know that there's going to be a lot of Game and Parks insight, kind of the insider's view to the hunting side and the wildlife management here in the state of Nebraska, which is lots of fun. So you're going to want to like that if you haven't already. Uh, Make that uh, one of those, again, get the notifications when something new pops up there, which is quite often during this fall as we get into the the hunting seasons out there. Uh, Jeff, like you said, this is something we've been talking about for some time. uh, And we actually do some learn to hunt workshops, and we have for decades here at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Who is this podcast for and what are we trying to accomplish? Well, with it? that's a good question, Hirsch. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there, but uh, not as much for the very novice deer hunter or the very novice hunter in general. And and that's really what we tried to target this or are targeting this for is to make sure that uh, we have something available for those who are just saying, you know, I'd like to get started deer hunting, but I mean, I don't really know where to start. I don't have some of that basic that uh, you guys are talking about. This is a good good way to get started and try and get your feet get your feet wet and and get out deer hunting ultimately get out deer hunting and by the end of it uh, we hope to cover all the basics for the most part and probably dive in just a little bit further beyond that today we're going to hit on uh, permits methods seasons a little bit uh, as well as just kind of getting everybody's feet wet in, in the podcast world. And then we've got other podcasts that are coming up on the gear. We've got uh, another podcast on where to find a spot to hunt, which is probably one of those that a lot of folks are going to be listening to because that's something, whether you've been hunting for a day a decade it doesn't really matter we're always looking for a new spot to try oftentimes and we can help out with that we're going to talk about the biology behind a deer deer just being deer and then what to expect as we go through the hunting season which we have a long one here in the state of nebraska uh some extra tips and tactics as far as strategies maybe some uh, ideas and insight on how these two guys hunt throughout the seasons um, that's uh, kicked off already September 1st and go all the way through the end of the year and then some out there. And then the one, this is going to be my favorite because a lot of folks say that one of the things that uh, uh, kind of scares them about getting into hunting is what if I get one? 
What I mean, this sounds exciting. God, God forbid. Yeah, <laughs> you're talking a hundred yeah. pound, two hundred pound uh, uh, mammal that now I've got to do something with and want to do something with. How do I go about doing that? And we'll get into that. And that one's my favorite. We've got that. And this is uh, Kayla Gaddick is just off the the side. You hear uh, she's making sure that everyone can hear us and see us. We appreciate that. But she, I think she's the one that labeled this one. Holy bleep! I got a deer. I think that's uh, been the, probably, the comment from many a hunter. Yep, uh, yeah, many a exactly. new hunter <laughs> catches the essence. And hopefully, depending on the success that we're going to talk a little deer and beer perhaps have a little social hour out in the virtual campfire sometime talk uh, updates on the season as we we go through it because we're just kind of kicking off the seasons here like i said we got a long ways to go but we're going to get uh, through all those here in, in just a bit so Let's talk a little bit about deer, uh, very basic biology, perhaps. We've got just a couple minutes to do this before we get into the, the seasons and the methods of take. Uh, you know, first of all, why deer? Why, why is that such a, an attractive thing to, to hunt here in the state of Nebraska? And, and what do hunters do uh, on that side? And, and Jackson, let's talk about fun. Why, why hunt deer first? Oh, uh, deer, uh, for me, deer is, it's, it's a challenge. It's uh, it's readily available, and we you know Nebraska is a heck of a state to hunt deer in. We we are a deer hunting state for the most part. Our license numbers show that people love to do it, and we have great opportunities. And we have you know two types of deer in Nebraska. Um, there are we have long seasons. We have uh, you know multiple choices for what uh, type of weapon you want to get out there with. So it's. Uh, it's Kind of, it's a whole gamut, man. Yeah, yeah you, you get to see a lot of a deer's life mm -hmm. from September 1st all the way through that late antler season, which goes into January. And, and Jeff, I, I made mention of that, you know, deer hunters benefit the deer on a lot of different levels. What does that mean? Well, in terms of benefiting the deer, of course, my, managing deer populations are critical in, in all states that have deer, Nebraska certainly being no exception. And so bringing those numbers down, good for the deer herd, good for the deer population overall, good for Nebraska landowners. It's good, you know, it's, it's a positive for everybody. And uh, and of course, like Jackson said, so many reasons that we do that. The side, the side benefit is it has a very big ecological and economical impact to the state of Nebraska. You know, hunters as a whole, you take hunting and shooting sports, you're well over a billion dollar impact to the state of Nebraska. Deer is a major part of that. Uh, whether you're you know, if you're female, the studies research show that yeah, it's you know deer are, are a prime uh, uh, game species because they it's all about getting meat for the table, bringing food home for the family. But I think all whether it's women, you know, adults in general, what have you, uh, I think adventure is what we seek. And what greater adventure is there than chasing mule deer or white tail deer in the great Nebraska uh, you know deer wood? Yeah, I mean, there's more plains. There's there's something something primal about uh, getting very out there much and, is. And, and, chasing and exciting deer and just it, exciting oh absolutely uh, there's not there's no question about it. deer hunting is exciting uh if it doesn't make the hair on the back of your neck stand up there's there's other issues at play because <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh it, it's just a fun uh and they'll teach you a lot you will be humbled i think everybody should deer hunt for at least once in their life because you will be humbled and you will be you will be amazed by uh, what you see in the deer yeah, i can't that's awesome can't say how many times you hear people say oh I, I see deer in my backyard all the time or turkeys and it must be so easy to hunt them and it's like it's it's a whole different thing yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, it changes yeah. It, well, it, it's yeah. different it's kind of like there's a there's a difference between seeing elk in a national park and elk in the in the mountains with a permit in your pocket. There's a whole different it's a whole different feeling. <laughs> and deer the same way. You see deer a lot, but being in the on the plains or in the deer woods and seeing them, smelling them, hearing them, uh, with the chance to connect with them is is pretty darn special. And here in Nebraska, we're not the only predator on deer, but we are probably the most numerous and the one that has the most impacts on it. Uh, you know, the hunting seasons. Uh, that's the biggest. Also, uh, I hate to say it, but the Buick and, and the highway is, is another one. We've got some others out there. Uh, and what's neat in a state like Nebraska, you know, food usually isn't the limiting factor. Our weather isn't usually the, the most hostile in the wintertime. Uh, and so the carrying capacity, the biological carrying capacity is huge. Uh, and it out ways or out, uh, can go beyond what the social caring capacity is, Absolutely. Uh, which obviously we've got to keep in mind here at the game and parks because there are folks making a living on the land. Uh, there's also those folks that are traveling back and forth to a job, to school, whatever on the highways. And we've got to uh, meet that as well. So the hunters are an awesome tool uh, for doing that. Just that that's probably the main tool here in the state of Nebraska. Let's talk a little bit about the methods in the seasons. Cause I think when people decide I want a deer hunt, the one thing they've got to think about, uh, and they usually do it, and one of these is the first thing. How do I want to hunt them? You know, what's the method I want to pursue them with? Or 
And this kind of, the method often impacts this. Here's the time I want to hunt them. You know, I like it warm. I like it cold, whatever it is. And our seasons are divided up by method, by time of year and all that type of stuff. So let's start with that. Methods of take. How many different ways are there to take deer, Jeff? Well, and, and that's a great way to start. I think a lot of people start in that method stage uh, in general. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, start with the season. Your archery season starts September 1, so archery hunting. Uh, firearm season, that's rifle handgun or or muzzleloader during the during the november firearm season uh and then of course a crossbow as well uh during the archery season so a longbow or a crossbow uh and then a uh, muzzleloader during the december season so uh, a, a number of ways rifle handgun uh, crossbow um ar- archery t- you know, uh, longbow uh muzzleloader and uh and then there's all different facets of those types of methods to take so uh and i think that's what's exciting is a lot of people start off going i want a rifle deer hunt or i want a bow hunt i think after while they kind of gravitate toward that you know i want to be able to feel that october season you guys are talking about well the only way to do that is with a bow and arrow right or crossbow right and so that that uh, sometimes that'll start to dictate that but i think people start off i want to do your hunt and i want to use this method to take to do so and what's kind of neat is you've got some other little seasons sprinkled in there yes. to help uh, manage some of the doe populations some of the white tail herd you got to do that with the antlerless uh, permits and things like that uh and and yeah, the weather, that's got to be a huge thing, too. I mean, it is one of those things that we all think about golden October days and maybe a little chill in the air come November. But there are some that just love the cold weather of December and the snow and the frigid times out there uh, to deer hunt in as well. Uh, so kind of walk us through that, because if you decide I want to go with a rifle, I want to go with a center fire deer rifle, your time frame is going to be a little bit more reduced than if you decide, like you were mentioning, Jeff, if I want to go with archery tackle. Yeah. So, you know, walk us through that, that, uh, you know, those seasons, how long are they Jackson and, and, uh, uh where can you find out more about it? I guess. Sure. Well, well, why don't we start with the longest season? So we have bow season. So bow season starts September 1st in Nebraska and goes all the way through December. And then we can also get that, that January, uh, antlerless season. Um, you can hunt that with the bow. And then our next longest season is our muzzleloader season. So that's, you know, black powder and starts, uh, it's basically the entire month of December. And then our rifle season's a little, little shorter still. So then we've got our main rifle season in November. That's the one most people get super excited most, about. Most popular. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And so that's uh, that's middle, middle of November, kind of fluctuates a little bit every year. But, um, and then we have our, our late January um, antlerless season. And then we also have an October uh, river antlerless season. River antlerless season, that's right. That That's usually pretty early there in, in December. Uh, so, Jeff, rifles, oftentimes the season that most people think of and, and want to cut their teeth on when they're starting deer hunting. And as Jackson mentioned, it seems like it changes a little bit each year, but that's based on the calendar because there's a formula that the commissioners usually use, and they still have to approve that season each and every year. But what is the formula for the November rifle deer season? And and you're right, it is, but it's basically the Saturday closest to November 13th every year. And so that's going to fluctuate a little bit every year. And so sometimes it seems earlier, sometimes it seems later. Uh, And and then we have that, oh, geez, the rut is happening, you know, earlier, late this year, and don't get confused. But the Saturday closest to November 13th is the uh, the official uh, start of the firearm season and uh, and then the rut the rut doesn't care what that date is the rut's happening yeah yep there you go there you go and one of the things that uh, we're bringing this up folks is make sure you get a hold of the current big game guide it's going to have all the season dates in there and methods of take that are legal during that time it's got a nice little uh, guide how to uh, just a few pages in planning your hunt as far as uh, walking you through that, because it's going to tell you what permits you need, because you got to have that deer permit. Uh, you also have to have that habitat stamp. If you're a resident, 16 years of age or older, or any non-resident has to have that. Uh, and a lot of folks wonder then, what about hunter education? So we brought in the pro folks. We have the coordinator, not just a coordinator of the hunter ed program for the state of Nebraska, but the coordinator for the state of Nebraska. So walk us through that because we've got two requirements here in the state of Nebraska that might apply to deer hunting based on the method you're using. Yeah, so Nebraska is a unique state in a lot of ways and hunter education is no different. So we've got, we're a state that requires a separate and specific bow hunter education requirement. So in Nebraska, if you're hunting with a rifle, shotgun, muzzle loader, or air gun, you gotta have a firearm hunter education if you're between the ages of 12 and 29. 
So, and then the same group, ages 12 through 29, if you're hunting with a bow or crossbow, you got to have bow hunter education. So we've got different classes that tailor to those, and then we've also got combo courses that cover all that curriculum. You get both certificates, and you just, you're done in one, one swoop. That's pretty cool. And you've got three options now for yeah. knocking those requirements out as well. Yep. Uh, what are there, and where do we find them? Yep, so all this information can be found at it's, uh, huntsafenebraska.org is our website. Uh, we have in-class courses, we have um, online courses, um, we have kind of a blended course that's, uh, that's online and then a little bit in person. Oh, nice, nice. Never been easier, more convenient, Jeff. It, it really couldn't be. In fact, it's just gotten more convenient over the last several years. A lot of states are following suit with similar uh, ways of taking the course for convenience. And yeah, and uh, what we're finding is the students are getting you know the same out of the course. It's it's a very very powerful course uh, in reducing the number of hunting incidents in the field over the last you know 30, 40 years. Very proud of our course here in Nebraska and our instructors, our volunteer instructors, second to none. Uh, their dedication, their passion across the state, making sure there's classes available. We really, really appreciate that. No, that's exactly right. Well said. All right, now we're going to kind of we, we scratched the surface on permits. Uh, now we got we know the requirements. You need a permit. You need a habitat stamp, 16 years of age or older. If you're a resident or all non-residents, um, on our education requirements. Let's kind of dive into where you find those permits and how to tell, you know, a little bit more of which one you might need yeah, out yeah. there. So, Jeff, let's let's start with that. Where, where do we find them? And well, and, and we exactly. Getting a, you know, a big game permit in Nebraska couldn't be easier. You know, you go to, you know, outdoornebraska.gov, hit permits, and you go go online, fill, register yourself, and and, uh, and buy whatever permits are available. Uh, so buying a permit couldn't be easier. Now, I say that because, you know, years ago, when I cut my teeth on deer hunting, it was uh, fill out the card, send it in the mail, wait three months, and when that envelope showed up, you couldn't even open it. You were so nervous, right? You had to have mom open it because you had to have somebody tell you whether you got a doe tag or an you know, antlers tag or an either sex tag and you wanted the either sex tag uh and today of course it's you know, instant instantly buy it online uh for the most part uh, outside of our draw a couple draw units so uh the, the you're going to need a the uh, uh, big game archery license if you're going to archery hunt you're going to need a big game archery permit or a deer archery permit if you're going to firearm hunt you'll have a you have a permit during that 10 day or nine day firearm season in november uh muzzleloader that's a that's a, a specific muzzleloader uh, permit here in Nebraska, and and it's also critical to know what permit allows you to harvest a antler deer or an antlerless deer. Here in the state of Nebraska, you're allowed only up to two antler deer uh, per year. And so uh, if you were to buy any of our, like our archery, our archery deer tag and our muzzleloader deer tag, both allow you to take an antler deer. Those are your two antler deer. You would not be able to purchase another antler deer. And so, you know, our, our hunters, we're constantly trying to play, well, what we think we're going to be doing this year and what, what season we think we're going to hunt yeah, and uh, to make sure that we get all the deer tags that we're looking for. And then those antlerless deer tags, season choice type tags, uh, those allow as many as you, as are available if you want to continue to buy those you can uh and certainly those are incredibly important helping us with our our uh, herd herd uh, reduction efforts or maintaining a herd at a certain level in certain management units so that's why we have those and the the units are something you've got to pay attention to as well uh like you said those seasons choice or antlerless tags uh because they're defined boundaries on yes. where you can use those uh, oftentimes that match the same units that we use for those novi november firearm uh, permits as well uh, and the other thing I'll toss out there is make sure you sign them uh, here in the state of Nebraska you got to have a that that copy on your person when you're out there in the field hunting uh, if you're successful you've got to have it canceled we'll go over that later in one of our other episodes but the same token it's got to be signed to be validated and, and make it official that's a that's a great point Hershey and I and I, we just went over something that I think can be very complicated so I want to reiterate this because you know we break those those units down and you know the firearm season for example that firearm tag is going to be for a specific unit of course on on our in our hunt guide here we have maps of those units and you can go on to those those units and look on the guide and look at the map and determine what unit uh, you you want to hunt in first and foremost and then determine what's available but you know the statewide unit those areas that are statewide your archery tag is a statewide tag your muzzleloader tag is a statewide tag and and those are your basic two that are going to be statewide and so you don't worry about units for those but uh, but certainly when it comes to firearm that's going to be a, a broken into units and then we also have those statewide buck tags and uh, incredible convenience factor costs a little bit more money uh, not 
broken down by unit. They have statewide effort uh, access, but uh, so it's just you know going online or looking at the hunt guide to learn those what what, what tag has uh, what boundaries is going to help you a lot in determining what tag you might want, what time of year you might want to hunt. Uh, excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Now I'm going to ask you a question uh, that you guys weren't able to prepare for. All right, and we're just going to see what you say. This is you know reaction stuff. All right. So say somebody brand new to deer hunting, hasn't done it yet ever, just now thinking about it, comes up to you and says, what season should I hunt? What would be your first thought? Or maybe you've got a couple of of thoughts for them. Because like you said, rifle, that's pretty common. Nine days, not a lot of time, especially if you've got to work some during the the week and can't call in sick that entire time like Jackson does. Uh, but, uh, you know, what would you say? What's, what season would you hunt? What permit should they buy? Uh, I would push them towards a season's choice tag somewhere close to where their home is, or if they have a spot that they've already got to hunt. Um, that's what I would push them towards. If they're a brand new hunter, you know, any deer is going to get your heart pumping. It's going to be your first deer. It doesn't matter what the heck it is. It's, it's your first deer. So I would pick that season's choice tag. It gives you all kinds of options on when to hunt. Um, and, uh, and so that's what... Explain that. We probably we just really haven't gotten too in depth on that season's choice, what we call the antlerless tags, because they are kind of unique. I don't know many other states that do this, uh, and what choice you have and how long they're good for. Right. Uh, it's uh, so basically the season's choice tag. It's an antlerless tag for a specific unit, but you can hunt any of the seasons given that you've got the right you know, weapon, right? If you got right. a rifle for yeah. the rifle season, muzzleloader for the muzzleloader season, archery season, and so on. So that, that, that allows you to hit multiple times of the year. You know, if you got that, if you got a, if you hunt, if you're hunting with a rifle, then you get the nine day rifle season in November. And then you also get the 15 day rifle season in January. Um, so you get to hunt two different seasons there as well. And then, you get to use, choose your method and the season right, until you, exactly. you fill it. Which right. is, which Maybe is you've got a buddy you could borrow a muzzleloader from. Maybe you've got a buddy you could borrow a crossbow from. Um, and you can hit all those seasons right there. All right, Jeff, top that one. Well, I, and I'm not going to because I, I don't disagree. I think he <laughs> nailed it. Uh, it's, it's easy. There's, there's pros and cons of every one of our seasons, and all of them are, are well-suited for the novice hunter. But that, that season choice, uh, it, it allows you to bounce around with methods of take, different times of the year, and it's probably one of the most flexible. And, again, I think when it comes to novice hunters, how we hunt deer, when we hunt deer is more important a lot of times than which particular deer I'm able to hunt. And so I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. My next one would be the, the nine-day season, and that just because they're, again, it's pretty straightforward, and you'll have the opportunity for a harvest of different types of deer. And, uh, yep, it, it can be uh, – there's a lot of people out there at the same time, but uh, – uh, quite honestly, in most of the places I hunt, I, I wouldn't know it. I, I, I don't see them. And so uh, I'm not running into them, and I don't, I don't think that's a, a huge factor on, on a lot of areas. can be on some, but I think that uh, can be a really good season. Archery, you know, crossbow. I mean, a crossbow hunter, how many months of the year? September, October, November, December. That's a pretty good season right there in and of itself. But um, I, I'd go season choice. I really would. Season's choice. All right. That's... I, I thought I'd get some uh, some different answers there, but that was that was pretty. What'd good. you think you were? What, what'd you think? Good muzzleloader, not bad, not a bad. T- you know, thirty day season with a firearm with a gun, muzzleloader, not a bad season at all. But the weather can be a little hectic that time of year, and sometimes a novice isn't ready for you know sub zero temperatures and that kind of thing. So, other if you if you want another one to throw out there would be the statewide buck tag because then you can hunt again multiple seasons anywhere in the state besides some of those you know areas that are uh, restricted to, to mm-hmm. you know, mule deer and stuff like that but sure. that's that's kind of in the weeds but um yeah you can hunt multiple seasons tons of different areas um but then you're you do have to shoot an antler deer so that's that's kind of the caveat there there you go there you go and one thing that i'm going to toss out there and this is something that that uh doesn't matter how many years you've been hunting as a as a hunter uh for deer I, I do think you need to at least, even if you're not hunting, get out there and watch some of the rut going on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, at the end of October, uh, early November, and you'll see bits and pieces of it all the way through the month of November and even into December sometimes. Because if you want to see deer, how do I say it? At their best or at their worst? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's, you, it's the, one of those the, rut, the rut's a crazy the time. The most active time yep. of the year for them. That's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's one of those things that we'll talk about in another episode as we talk about deer being deer and what they go through. 
Uh, but it is one of those chaotic times where you could see a whole bunch of activity in a real short amount of time in a real small space. Uh, or that might be happening just the next farm over or next WMA over and you're, you don't even know what's it's going on. It's my favorite time. But it is absolutely a riot to, to watch out there. And I think that's part of the experience because hunting, let's, let's face it. Yep. We get to fill our freezer, especially with these big deer here in the state of Nebraska, put a lot of good quality protein in the, in the family uh, stores, but at the same token, we're hunting for a good experience. We're hunting out there for the story makers and the things that we're going to remember for some time. Sometimes that's the weather changes on us. Uh, sometimes it's the beauty of the, the fall here in Nebraska or the winter time, but sometimes it's that rainstorm or, or something odd that happens out there. And during the rut, odd things do happen. Very odd every, things. Yep. Every year, but that's kind of the fun. Like you said, September 1st, we got deer just being deer, just food and all that stuff. Uh, and then you get through the rut, and then you get that, that winter time where you and, kind of and settle back down. Honestly, that's why I think the, the firearm season is such an opportune time because, you know, when you're when you're bow hunting in September or October, you know, you expect to see deer in early morning. You expect to see deer late in the evening. But for a good portion of the day, you'd be surprised to see deer a lot of times. But when it comes to the rut, there's never a minute on stand that I don't expect to see deer. I always expect to see deer because my experience has told me that at any time of day, that monster buck or those does can just come walking by or in many cases running by chasing each other and whatnot yeah and uh, that that level of excitement is second to none any minute of the day it can happen that's same all season long but during the rut very pronounced very pronounced it is and sometimes um, you can get by not being the most stealthy during the rut there's times where deer need to stay alive and, and they do you've it. hunted with me evidently <laughs> but it's one of those things that they've got other things on their mind besides just eating and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, survival at that time uh so it really does make it interesting to, to say the least and i know a lot of hunters out there are, you know that's the time they block off for their vacation yep. they don't do anything in the summer they work hard until they get to that that november time slot and then they take a bunch of days off so all right uh, that kind of hits the intro on our How to Deer podcast. I mean, we're going to get into it next. I know you guys have got a whole bunch of things up your sleeve because our next one, Gear to Deer, these folks, I mean, you guys some have take two vehicles out to the field just to get all the gear that you're going to use. Sometimes that, that gear can be pretty darn important. <laughs> so uh, keep an eye out on that. Any closing thoughts from either of you two as we, we conclude our first podcast here well, on Hunt Nebraska? I always have closing thoughts, or she <laughs> opening deer, thoughts, closing deer. thoughts yeah, in the middle. Focus. But I will say this: uh, it's 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 much simpler than than you think it is. Uh, get the guide, read through the guide, call us if you have questions. But the main thing is you got to get your permits figured out, figure it out and get out there and hunt deer. And the more time you spend outdoors in the field, the more you're going to feel confident, the more you're going to learn, and the more you're going to walk away going, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. Why did I not start doing this a long time ago? There you go. When did you start deer hunting? I was a little bitty kid. The first year I was able to. What do you, I mean, that's one of the beauties too, I guess, is back then, what was the minimum age? 16? Uh, 12. 12. 12 now it's 10 that's yep. something else we should yep. probably toss out how old were you well uh, i started i started tagging along when i was nine that was that was the first year where they were like bundle up you're, you're gonna sit there with us there you go <laughs> and i was there excited as ever all right and uh jeff brought up questions so if you've got questions about what we talked about today or anything deer hunting or hunting uh in general give us uh give us a look up on the hunt nebraska on facebook ask questions Jackson's monitoring that 24 seven. He'd love to answer those, <laughs> those questions for you. Cause if you don't ask those questions, he's just staring at a blank screen folks. So uh, give him purpose, but uh, make sure you join us out there and join us next week. When we talk gear to deer right here on hunt, Nebraska, hunt, Nebraska brought to you by your Nebraska game and parks commission.